All right, so the first thing you guys need to do with your box stillized painting is we need to actually take it off of the um, stretcher board, okay? So um, I'm going to try my best to kind of show you guys how to do this. So the first thing I do, I will flip it over to the other side. Just make sure you don't have, like, oil pastels or something like that on the table. You don't want to get that to transfer. My drawing painting one kids have been doing their oil pastel project. So you want to just start by kind of taking taking off the tape from the back. And I'm going to show you how to remove it from the front. And this is important, okay? It's not as simple as it, what it might uh, seem. And if you don't do this the right way, you could rip up your project, okay? So when you guys do this, So when you guys do this, you want to pull the tape off. You don't want to go straight up. So you don't want to pull the tape straight up off of the paper because if you do that, you are probably going to put a pretty good rip um, into your painting. Okay. But instead, what you want to do is you want to keep that tape kind of close. So I've actually got it peeled back, but I've got it um, up against the board real flat, and I'm pulling it off away from the painting. And you can see I am getting a little bit of uh, paper coming off of there, and that's fine. Okay, this is the border. I'm going to show you with this side. This will be better. So, again, keep the tape nice and close to the board like that and pull it off away from the project. Away from the project. And then you should have this nice, clean line. Now, sometimes if the tape wasn't on or kind of bubbled up a little bit, sometimes the you know paint might get up and underneath the tape. That happens sometimes. But you should have a nice border there. Okay. So what I want you guys to do is work on getting the tape off of your painting. Give you guys a few minutes to do that. All right, so the next thing you guys uh, need to do, so after you get your painting off the board, you're going to put the boards away. You should have your black paper, and make sure you have the right black paper because um, there's a different size for the horizontal projects and a different size for the vertical projects, okay? And then, um, so you should have that. You should have also, too, a roll of masking tape. I'm going to be using just a white color pencil so that way you could see my marks on the video, but you guys should be using just a regular pencil. So any old pencil you got will work, okay? And you should have a ruler, which they should be already at your table, okay? So I'm going to be actually doing two different demos here, one for vertical and one for horizontal. I'm going to, I think most of you guys have horizontal, so I'm going to do that first. All right, so this is going to be kind of hard to see. I'm going to do my best. All right, so I'm going to put my, my fake, my fake project over here to the side. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your ruler. Now, number one thing, guys, you got to make sure you're reading the ruler right, okay? So if you're using one of those acrylic rulers, I've got one right here. So, if you have one of those acrylic rulers, you guys look, I don't know, it's kind of hard to see. Oh, there you go. Um, the measurements don't start at the end of the ruler. They start where it says zero, okay? So, you need to make sure that you are reading the ruler right. I'm going to be using this metal ruler, and in this situation, the measurements do start at the very end of the ruler, okay? So make sure you're using that correctly. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my ruler like this to my paper. So this is like the top of my black paper. Again, this is kind of hard to see just because I've got a dark desk. Kind of hard. There we go. All right, so this is the top of my paper. This is the bottom. So I am going to measure one inch from the very top. And I'm going to put a mark on my paper so that it's kind of uh, horizontal, basically, like a wide 
dash mark. I'm going to kind of zoom into this a little bit so you can see how I did that mark. There is a reason why I do those marks that way. Okay, so measure just an inch from the top. And then I'm going to measure essentially an inch from the left side. And if you guys notice, you can see that my ruler is quite a bit, it's probably about three inches down from the top of the paper. So I'm going to measure one inch from the left side. And this time when I make my mark, I'm going to make it nice and tall and vertical. And then I'm just going to go over here to the side and measure one inch from the right side. Same thing. So there are my marks, okay? One inch from the top, one inch from the left side, and one inch from the right side. Now, if you have a vertical project, you're doing the exact same thing, just your paper is a different size. Okay? And I'll do this here vertical again just so you guys can see it. And I again, I do this the same way with all of this stuff, regardless of the size of the paper. And when you guys, uh, if you plan on going to college and major in art and design, you will have to probably mount your projects every time you turn them in. So you got to get used to this, how to do this. All right, so the next thing, we're ready to actually attach our painting to the black paper. Now, again, I've got a fake project here. So you guys did this on watercolor paper. Because you did it on watercolor paper, we cannot use the rubber cement um, on the um, back of the watercolor paper to go onto the black paper. It just doesn't work very well because even though we stretch the paper, the paper just still isn't like super flat. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to use tape, okay? So grab your roll of tape and you're going to get Mrs. Gower's lesson on how to make a proper roll of tape, okay? The secret is you don't need a whole lot, okay? So I've just got, I don't know, a couple inches there, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to take your tape going to make sure the sticky side is on the outside and you're just going to fold it like this so that the ends overlap and attach to each other. And I take the tape and I kind of flatten it out so it's not really tall. So it's really thin and skinny basically. Because I don't want to make it bulky. I don't want to wad this up because then it's just not going to stick, to, uh, this isn't going to attach to the black paper very flat. So you're going to put your project, um, so you're looking at the back of it. Now for this project, because it's a little bit wider or bigger, you might want to put like a couple pieces of this tape in each corner. And again, the secret is really that the tape isn't that big, so it's not that wide. If you do really long tape, it's just going to kind of fall off of the, um, kind of just lift off of the black paper. I'm going to kind of put two pieces in each corner. Again, the secret is here, smaller pieces of tape and smash it so that it's flat. So you don't get any gaps between the black paper and the painting. Get it right up in the corner too, so that way the corner doesn't lift off, because that's where it will if it's going to do anything. So. And then I might just put just to make sure that things are all good, put maybe a piece of tape um, right here in the middle on the outside edges. I'm not going to put any tape in the middle of the painting. So 
So I think that's pretty good. So I've got you know two pieces in each corner. I've got a piece in the middle on each edge. I think it's about all you need. And then the next step is just to attach your painting to the black paper. I just kind of hover it over until I've got things lined up with those marks that I made. And then when I'm ready, I just go ahead and kind of press it down. Now, because you guys have a white border on this, what I would suggest that you do is remember I give you four, you know, there's two points on this, basically four percentage points just for you doing your signature correctly. Your signature, your initials is going to go in the white border right here in the lower right hand corner. So this is where you want to put your initials, not in the painting, on the white border. Uh, no, you no, no. You always use it in the. You always you do your your uh, signature in the media that you did your project. Ever, always, 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 always. We did not. So you want to use probably paint, okay? So use the India ink. You want something nice and quiet because remember we don't want to take the attention away from the painting. So if you do your signature huge, really dark, big bold letters. That's all we're going to see, and the painting falls away, okay? The star of the show is the painting. So whenever you do your signature, it needs to be quiet, understated, small, hidden. You don't want to see it, okay? So there's that, okay? So I'm going to give you guys a minute to do that, and then I'm going to show you how to do the label. So the next thing, guys, I'm going to show you how to do is the label. Alright? So the label, you, you obviously need a label. You need an ultra fine sharpie marker and you need a jar of rubber cement. Okay? I'm going to turn my project around just so you guys can see this a little bit better. I'm going to zoom in. So hopefully it will make it easier for those of you in the back to see. Alright, so you guys know the drill here. Okay? This is nothing new for you. Okay, artist, that's your name, and always and forever, properly capitalize your name, guys. Even if you're one of those people who likes to do like all lowercase letters or all uppercase letters, I want it to be a formal way, okay? So capitalize the first letter in your first name and capitalize the, la the first letter in your last name, okay? Media. Now, media is going to be um, a, l a little different for, for a lot of you guys. Uh, just because a lot of you guys didn't just stick to just India ink or just watercolor. So, with this, it can be a little tricky. It depends on how much media you actually used. Uh, depending on how much you used, you may need to write some of it down here or try to get maybe two lines here for media. Okay, so what I'm just going to write. I'm just going to go ahead and write India ink and watercolor. And I'm not going to put watercolor paint just because I don't have enough room for that. But remember, guys, watercolor is one word. Again, if you have, like if you added color pencil, if you added charcoal pencil, um, oil pastels, uh, you may need to kind of squeeze all of this in there. So that might take a little work for you guys. Okay, so the next thing, I'm going to skip title, go to the class. So class, you're going to write drawing and painting four, and you're going to use the Roman numeral for four. No need to put class period on there because there's only one. Now title, remember that titles do have to be have to connect to the project, okay? Does that mean that you have to have the word box or skull or something like that or draped fabric in your title? No. Um, so you kind of think, look at your still life, look at your painting, think about what sort of um, title that you think fits 
It could be a metaphor for something, whatever. It can be symbolic. Uh, totally up to you, but, you know, I'm not going to call this, and I love using this example. I'm not going to call this bunny rabbits and cotton candy because it has nothing to do with bunny rabbits and cotton candy. So make sure you choose something that works. And I do not ever accept on titles, okay? So write your title there and make sure that it's properly capitalized. And then the last thing is to actually attach it to your project. So I'm going to lift this back up. You guys can see the whole thing. So this is the bottom of my project. There we go. This is going to go right down here at the very bottom in the center. And you are going to rubber cement that on there. So when you get that rubber cement, remember, you want to take most of that glue off the brush. And you're just going to put that rubber cement around all four edges. And we're just going to flip this over, eye it in the middle. You just want a little bit of space between the artwork label and the artwork. Just like that, okay? The last thing for you to do, make sure you sign it. Now you have your evaluation sheet to fill out. So remember, you got to make sure you fill out all the student section. You're going to fill out name, title. You're going to give yourself a score down here at the bottom. Calculate what uh, grade you gave yourself. And then don't forget you have questions on the back, okay, that you do need to answer. And I'm going to talk to you guys about that sort of off the video. All right? So that will get turned in with your project. Everybody's turning it in today regardless if you're done or not.